go to war. And it has more commandments than any other commandment in the any other Torah portion. Any other Torah portion. It has altogether 73 commandments. 73 commandments that aren't mentioned anywhere in the Torah. 73 oh, commandments. Oh. I won't list all of them. A lot of commandments. We'll have to take, we'll take, this will take us a couple of days just to finish all these clues. But uh, among the commandments that are sort of relevant today, I could go through it and actually check the ones that are relevant today. We have um, some commandments that are not relevant today, like the commandment that this portion begins with, with the the uh, Yafat Toar, that when Jews go to war, that it's permissible for every soldier to take himself a non-Jewish woman under certain conditions and marry her. Strange. Everyone likes the story of the wayward son. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a little bit different. There never was such a thing. There never will be such a thing. It's impossible for there to be such a thing, but there is. Okay, then there's the story of the uh, sending away the bird. A man should not dress like a woman. A woman should not dress like a man. The, the prohibition against homosexuality is, uh, is really clearly mentioned in, in the book of Vayikra, in Kadoshim and in Achrei Mot. So that was like two books ago. But here, this is also a hint at it. A man is not supposed to dress, cross-dressing, forbidden. This also is, that they say a lot of this is they say like a man shouldn't trim his beard. The same reason. He shouldn't try to beautify himself. He should look nice, but not to beautiful. Uh, you have to make a, if you have your, your house, maybe we'll learn this in the Sikha. If you have a roof in your house where people can walk, uh, probably you're obligated to put a fence around the roof. A fence. And if not, somebody falls off of it, then you're in trouble. Um, you can't wear shatnes, huh? Garments that are made from wool, woven with wool and, uh, and linen together. And some people say you even can't use it, like to sit on it if, it, if there's, that's being a little bit severe, but. Uh, if you want to get married, good idea. Good idea to get married. It's one of the mitzvahs of the Torah. First mitzvah, having children. But if you want to get married, you have to get married according to the Torah. It's called Kiddushin. Kiddushin. Holiest thing in Judaism is marriage. The word for holiness is Kodesh. And this is the only command which is called Kiddushin. And they say that's in the Tanya, explains that's every time we make a blessing. Asher Kiddushanu, the mitzvah of God marries us. Every time we do a commandment. It's marrying. It's Kiddushanu. Kiddushin. It's marrying. There's a whole tractate on that. Um, here's a couple of not nice ones. In the time of the temple, it doesn't exist anymore. There used to be um, punishment of stoning. Huh? Stoning. Doesn't exist anymore. Sorry to disappoint all of you. And if there's any bloodthirsty listeners, <clears throat> no more stoning. We don't do that anymore. Um, a mamzer, the forbidden of a mamzer. A mamzer cannot marry a Jewish woman, technically. A mamzer, and also a mamzer woman can't marry a man. A mamzer is a woman or child, any child, man or woman, that was born from a relationship that is punishable by death. A man had relations with his sister, with his mother, with a, a married woman. The child that's born from that is called a mamzer, and technically he cannot get married. And if he does get married, all of his children are mamzers. So very severe law. This law applies now. This law applies now. What can you do? Um, a negative commandment. Here we have a lot. I'm skipping. I'm skipping because there's 72 of them. Um, a lot of laws about war. 
when you go to war, there has to be a, there's a, say, uh, some laws about the holy temple. You cannot uh, can't charge. You're not allowed to charge interest from a Jew. You loan a Jew money, you can't take interest. How the banks do it, there's a whole process that they have to do called heter iska. It's like they're going into business with you, but you cannot take uh, interest from a loan you loan to a Jew. On the other end, there's a positive comment. You must take interest from a loan that you make to a non-Jew, which is only logical. I mean, the, the thing of not taking interest is really quite crazy. If you think about it, here you have $100,000 that you're just laying to waste. You know, you could invest it somewhere and you're giving to somebody, at least the person should have the common decency, according to the Torah, to pay you for the use of this money, right? This is not, if it's a Jew, he doesn't. But if it's a non-Jew, then things are normal. You, you loan money, you expect to pay interest. Uh, but here it says it's a commandment, but it doesn't say how much you have to take. You can... Okay, that's the commandment of not... Um, if you promise something, you've got to keep your promise. And if you promise in the name of God, ooh, then, you, then it's really bad if you don't keep your promise. That's why nowadays, if you make a vow, you're supposed to say, Bli neder. Without a, I'm not making a vow. Then there's some nice, not nice commandments. If a person wants to, God forbid, divorce his wife. So there's a whole procedure that you have to go through. And if you don't go through it, it's big trouble. She's not really divorced. She can't get remarried. If she, if she marries somebody else, the children are mamzerim. The children are mamzers. If she didn't get properly divorced, who? Big trouble. A chatan, a one, someone who gets married, the first year does not go out to war. Uh, nowadays, there's, well, I guess there is sort of wars. Anyway, the first year, uh, someone who gets married does not go out to war. I don't see that they really do that here in Israel, but nevertheless, it is a commandment. Uh, a, a positive commandment, you must pay day workers at the end of the day. You can't tell them to come back later. <clears throat> Also, other commandments about loaning. You should loan money to people. But you cannot um, go and demand the collateral back if the person doesn't have it. You can't demand laws about judges. So let's just, um, let's come on. Let's learn a little bit of the Chumash portion of today, which is very interesting. No, this is not what we want. Here it is. Oh, let's start from the beginning, right? There's a very interesting Kliyakar. Really, there's a very interesting um, Or HaChaim. Or HaChaim. Or HaChaim is Rabbi Chaim Ben Atar. And uh, he's got a very interesting thing about the Ishet Yafas Tor, the, um, the non-Jewish lady that you can take in the heat of war. You can marry her. It's a whole big procedure. We'll see what the procedure is. But, um, so we'll learn another person called the Kli Yakar. Kli Yakar. And the Kli Yakar is uh, Rabbi Shlomo Ephraim Malonstein. Malonshitz. Malonshitz. Sheets. Malonshitz. Rabbi Shlomo Ephraim Malonshitz. It was written about, I don't know, 400 years ago. We'll see. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Orachim, anyway, he asked a very interesting question about this law. What's the law? You go, a person goes out into war. Jews, when they went out to war, when they used to go out to war, they used to take the broken tablets with them. So the tablets used to go. It was holy. Only holy people could go. Any person who had sins, they went back home. said, go back home. <clears throat> he says, when you go out to war on your enemies, <clears throat> God gives you and God will put it in your hands. This is what we learned in the morning, right? And you'll take a <clears throat> prisoner. Prisoner. And if you take among your prisoners, you see a nice-looking lady. A nice-looking, not Jewish lady. And you desire her. And you want her for your wife. Now, the Orachayim asks a question. What in the world? How did this get over here? I mean, the only people going out to war are tzaddikim. And they're doing a war and they're with the tablets and everything. And, and they're going and fighting a war for the sake of Hashem. 
And all of a sudden he sees a now, what's he even thinking about? Where's his head? Where's it? What's going on? How did he get into the army? If that's where his, his head is at, right? It says only the tzaddikim go. Anyone who's not, anyone who's little sins has to go back home, right? <clears throat> so it says that the Orachayim says that this is, there are sparks of holiness in the world. And sometimes Hashem arranges that there's so much holiness when the Jews go out to war, war these are like the bravest men and the, the most devoted to God. They're risking their lives. And the tablets are with them. And the, the, they're so holy tzaddikim that the sparks of holiness want to join. And it happens to be sometimes these sparks of holiness are in this woman. And there's a whole procedure what you have to do with this woman. This non-Jewish woman. You see a not, nice looking lady, when you desire her. And you can take her for a wife. Whoa, whoa, how did that happen? So let's look at Rashi. Let's look at Rashi a little bit. I think this is the first Rashi. Here, Rashi. When you go out to the war, let's see. Oh, 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 I don't have this. I'm sorry. One second. Why didn't you say anything? Uh, come on, usually. I got lost comment. listening to your words. Uh, a weak argument, a weak excuse. Okay. Here we go. When you go out, when you go out to war on your enemy, and remember we learned in the Mimer and the Sikh in the morning, when you go out to war, you're already on your enemy. A Jew makes a decision that he's going to do it, he's already on top. And Hashem will put it into your hands. Rashi, when you go out to war, this is what's called an optional war. An optional war. There's two types of war the Jewish people go on. One type of war is called a milchemet mitzvah. You have to go, like conquering the land of Israel, or if they're attacking you, or making a war against a malik. There are certain wars which you have to go on, and usually in these wars you kill everybody. Everybody. Kill them all. The milchemet eres Israel ain lo mar v'shiviti shiviyo. It can't say in the war of Eretz Israel conquering the seven nations that were in the land of Israel <clears throat> that they did in the days of Joshua when he came in. Can't say over there that he took a, saw a non-Jewish woman. Shahari, Kavar, Neamar, it's all it says, Lo kol neshama. it says you can't leave anybody alone. Alive. Strange, strange commandment, but that's the way it was. So this must be talking about what's called an optional war. Strangely enough, in Judaism, the king could make what's called an optional war. And it was only in, in order to enlarge in the boundaries of Israel or to get money. Huh? It's very weird, risking everybody's life for money. But there was, if the king decided it, it was a necessary thing. Vishavisa Shivyo, nowadays there's no, I don't think there's, in Shavisa Shivyo, the rabos Kanani Shabbatokhan. If there was a Kanani, a non Jewish woman that was among them, you could take it, even if it was one of the Kana'ani. You could. Even though she is Shiva almost. Even though that they are of the seven nations. If you see a woman in Shiva, and as you were commanded to kill them all. But if you happen to see one that found favor in your eyes, as um, <clears throat> then you can marry her. You can take her for a while. This also applies to her. Next law, we're, we're, this is what we're going to do in the Kliyakar. We're going to go back to this. And you see that there's a, a beautiful woman and you desire her. The Torah is only talking against your Yetzir Hora, that if, a, if, you, if God doesn't allow you, a warrior, a fighter, to take this non-Jewish woman, he will marry her and forbidden. But if he does marry her, this non-Jewish woman, in the end, he will hate her. Like it says afterwards, the next commandment, if the woman, a man has two wives, one that he likes and one that he hates. And finally, in the end, she's going to give this lady that you converted her sort of against her will, so you'll end up hating her. In the end, she's going to give birth to a Ben Sora of Amor. She's going to give birth to this wayward son. Therefore, these three 
Nismachu Parshas Hallelujah. Therefore, these three parshas are together. You see, the, this is commandment of the woman you take for prisoner. Right after it comes the commandment. Look at this. One second. The next commandment is, if a person has two wives, one he loves and the other one he hates, and they have children, right? If the, the, the despised wife gives birth first to the firstborn, she, nevertheless, he has to favor that son. He has to give that son a double portion. What does it mean, the double portion? So it says if he has, let's say, five sons, so he gives the son a double portion. How do you use a double portion? So if he has five sons, so he divides up his, <clears throat> his uh, inheritance in six equal parts. He has five sons. So instead of dividing that up in five parts and giving him a double, and the others just have to fight over the four, remember the other, right, five sons. So he gives him a double portion. So then the remaining four have to fight over the three portions that are left. No, so what you do is you divide all of your money up into six portions. Six. And the four, oh, he's got five sons, right? So the four regular sons, each one of them gets one-sixth. That's four, so that's four-sixths. And this son gets two-sixths. He gets two portions. So he gets a double portion. Okay, then after that, he comes, oh, when a person has a Ben Sor of a Morris. So we see that these three laws are juxtaposed. That, that's the word, juxtaposed. One next to each other. I don't know if that's the right word, but anyway, nice big word. Juxtaposed, one next to the other. We see that first of all, there's the law of the taking the non-Jewish woman in battle. And then there is the law of a, if a man has a, a child from his wife that he hates, two wives and one he hates. And then after that, it talks about the Ben Sor of Amor, more, the wayward, evil, rebellious, troublesome son. So really I wanted to do a lot more, but I guess there's too much. I took a little bit too much on myself. So let's look at Siho over here. Okay, so it says, let's look at the Kli Yakar. Let's look at the Kli Yakar. <clears throat> and like I said, to get this name right, is Shlomo Ephraim Milunchitz. Milunchitz. City, I guess, Lunchitz. Who knows where it is, Lunchitz? Huh? Anyway, <clears throat> so he writes like this. What is this command? What's going on over here? You go out to war on your enemies. When you go out to war on your enemies, he's, he takes a different point in question than the Orachayim did that I just explained to you. <clears throat> it says, when you go to war against your enemies, God will put into your hands. So it says, Vadai shemadaber ba'oyev echad prati. This is talking about when you go to war, on your enemy. It's called your enemy, singular. It doesn't say, It says, when you go to war on your enemy, singular. It says, this is talking about like this. This is talking about an individual enemy that was... <coughs> one of your general enemies that it already talked about before. Who is this? Who is it? Who is this evil enemy that you've got? We talked about before. There was already the, 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 the Kanani, there was the Amalekites we saw. Who is this one enemy? This is your inner enemy who was Satan. This is what's called the devil. Ooh, uh, is there such a thing as the devil in Judaism? Well, let's have a, I'll give you, I'll give you a little more, how do you say, common name. Your Yetzir Hora. This is your selfish impulse. Hamakatrik b'yoser b'shas sakana that makes trouble for a person at the time of danger. 
b'milchama in a war, which is explained in Parsha Shoftim. But Parsha Kitetzel in milchama and Parsha Shoftim last week, Parsha here he talks about it a little more. Va'alav Omar v'natnu Hashem alakecha biyadecha. If so, we got a quick, quick question, a big question. How is how can Hashem promise that He's going to put it into your hand? I mean, your Yitzhar is making all sorts of trouble, especially, I mean, you have to realize, you know, war is, I've never been in the army personally, but I spoke to a lot of people that have been, when they go into war, it says like the first 10 seconds or minute or some people even longer, some people for their whole life, they're just overcome with fear. They're just overcome with fear because they're going, they're going to get killed. <laughs> These guys, there's people who want to kill you. They're standing over them. Their whole goal is to kill you. And not only that, back then, especially, I mean, now it's also the same. But back then, you, you saw your enemy. You had to fight the enemy face to face. I guess they had bows and arrows. Hari Akhar is after that. It says, Asia Jaffa store. After that, it says the, this beautiful non-Jewish woman that the Torah is only talking about your Yetzer Hora. So if we see that these people that go out to war Oh, to Masobo, that he still has a Yetzer Hora. That he can't hold himself back from this attractive non-Jewish woman. So how can there be this promise that God gives for not Hashem How can he be that he'll put it in, in your hand? If so, the explanation is like this. That in the end, the Natnu Sof Shiitnu Biyadecha. That in the end, you're going to win. Ki'inta say, if you do all of this, says afterwards that you have to shave her head, you have to make her look not nice, then you won't want her anymore. That's what the Rashi says, that in the end, you're going to hate her. Then certainly, your Yetzer, when you, it will go away from you when you hate her. And this, what's, how do you do this? How can you hate? It says it's better to go to the house of mourning than it is to the place of joy. Why? Because when a person remembers, hey, you know, maybe I can have all these pleasures now. and have a good time, but one day I'm going to die. And what's going to be with all my pleasures? Not only that, what's going to be with all my pleasures tomorrow? A person has all these, you know, has a good time today and does all these pleasures, feels really good. And then the next day, nothing is left. All he has is memories and he has desires for more pleasure. <clears throat> he said, okay, maybe today I can fill this pleasure. But what happens when a person dies? When a person, when a person sees his wife is crying on her mother, like right, this non-Jewish woman, she's weeping for her mother and father. So all of a sudden he remembers, hey, there's going to be one day that I'm going to also be mourning. And not only that, with this lady crying all the time, I'm always in a place of mourning. So he's going to remember that one day he's going to die and then his desires will leave him. <clears throat> leave him. And he's going to say, well, this is not the same uh, enthusiasm I had for this lady when we were in war. It goes away. He explains it more over here. But let's just go through the details, what he has to do to this lady. <clears throat> okay, first of all, he says, he takes her into his house and he shaves her head and then he says, does her nails, what does it mean, does her nails? Hegdilim, lets her nails grow long, so she'll look like sort of like an animal. She'll look sort of wild. Then he takes off Simla Shivya Bela. He takes off her, her garments, her prison garments from her. Now, what does it mean, prison garments? Rashi will say, the non-Jews, when the Jews would go to attack, so the non-Jews knew, also from the story of Bilam, that the Jews have a weakness for beauty. They have a weakness for this thing. So they would dress their daughters up nice. Look, look, say Rashi. Lefi shehem noim. Shehanachim, that the women, that the non-Jews, benoteim mitkashtot memelchama. Before they would go out to war, they would dress their daughters up really nice. Bishfil haznot acherim imahem in order to, how do you say, lure 
the enemy to them. So what do you do? You take her into your house. She's got all these beautiful garments that she put on in order to look very attractive. She has to remove these garments. She sits around in an old house robe in your house. You shave her head. She lets her nails grow long. So she's wandering around there all the time. You come in, you see her. You go out, there she is. You see her, she's crying. You see her, she's disgusting. In order what? That you won't desire anymore. So she weeps for her father and mother for one full month <clears throat> in order that it says the, the Jewish women will be happy and she'll be miserable. This she, the Jewish women will be dressed nice and she'll be disgusting. And then after that, if you desire her, in if you don't desire her, set her free. You cannot sell her from her. She's not power to the spoils of war. You can't misuse her. Because you have, it says, Because you had relations with her, they allow the Jew to have first relations with her when in the time of war. Because you, therefore, you cannot misuse her. That's what happens to the Eshet Yafas Torah. And then it goes to the law of the two sons. A person has two wives, one he hates, one he likes, etc. So if he has a son, he has to give that son double portion, and we already explained what that is. And afterwards is the law of the evil, troublemaking son, as we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow.